Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do some examples of how to deal with rational exponents. Now notice on the very first example up on the upper right there, that's the only one that has a non-1 in the numerator. Everything else has a 1 in the numerator. We just want to remember again what that means. The number in the denominator means the root. The number in the numerator means the exponent. So this can be written as the fifth root of 32 and the whole thing raised to the third power. So now we have to simply work out what's inside. So the fifth root of 32 is equal to 2, so we get 2 to the third power, which is equal to 8. Now all the other ones, we don't have a, numer in, a number in the numerator other than 1, and so that means we only have to worry about the root, the cube root, the square root, the fourth root, and so forth. But there's some nuances here that we're going to uh, experiment with, and we're going to see if we know what to do with them. First of all, the cube root of 64, so we write this like this, that's not a problem. We know that the cube root of 64 is simply equal to 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. The square root of 100, so again, it makes it a lot easier if we write it as a radical form first, and then we realize that's equal to 10. And here, negative 16 to the 1 fourth power, that means the fourth power of negative 16. Now here we have a problem because we cannot take an even root, a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, of a negative number. So what we could do here is say, well, there's no solution or no real number. However, we've already seen the imaginary number before. We've seen in the past that this can be written as the, square, or as the fourth root of negative one times the fourth root of a positive 16, and so this would be equal to the fourth root of negative 1 times the fourth root of 16, which is equal to 2. Now the question is, can we take the fourth root of negative 1? And the answer is no, we can't, so we're still stuck with saying the answer is not a real number. All right, how about that? Well, there we're taking the fifth root of a negative number, and that can be done correctly. So we say the fifth root of minus 32 is equal to negative 2, because negative 2 times itself 5 times gives us a negative 32. So we can take an odd root of a negative number, we cannot take an even root of a negative number, and if it's a square root, then we can indeed take the square root of negative 1, which is the number i, that imaginary number. In this case, we can write this as 1 25th to the 1 3rd power divided by 27 to the 1 3rd power, which is equal to the cube root of 125 divided by the cube root of 27, which is equal to 5 over 3. So that is how we solve a problem like that. Here, a negative 32 to the 1 5th power, that means that this is a negative 1 times 32 raised to the 1 5th power, so I can write it like this, which means that the 1 5th exponent does not apply to the negative because there were no parentheses there like we saw over here or we saw over there, but it doesn't matter because this can be written as negative 1 multiplied times the 5th root of 32, and of course the 5th root of 32 is 2, that's equal to negative 1 multiplied times 2, which is equal to negative 2 as the final solution to this problem just like it is there. So with an odd root, it doesn't matter if it's inside the parentheses or not inside the parentheses. And finally, negative 16 to the 1 4th power, there it does matter because the 1 4th only applies to the 16 and not to the negative sign. So this is negative 1 raised uh, times the 4th root of 16. And of course, that's negative 1 times the 4th root of 16 is equal to 2. And so that's also equal to negative 2. So we can take negative 16 to the fourth root because the fourth root only applies to the 16 and not to the negative sign when it's inside of parentheses you can see that we can't solve that problem and that is how it's done